Hi everyone, it's Mary Collette Rogers, Healthy Kitchen Companion, and I'm here today to talk about watermelons. The reason I'm talking about watermelons is because it's early September here in Colorado, and August and September are, in Colorado, are great watermelon months. We get really delicious, amazingly sweet watermelons, and I love them, except for the seeds. <laughs> and I'm sure you've read into this yourself, but they're a pain in the neck to get the seeds out. So, I've discovered a technique that can make for speedier seeding, and I want to share that with you today, along with a way to use up that watermelon in a really simple recipe called a watermelon cooler. So, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing to get started, and I often say this in our classes, is with your mind. Um, in my mind, in this instance, has got watermelon seeding made out to be this terrible, time-consuming, tedious chore, when in point of fact, it takes all of 10 minutes, <laughs> which isn't a big deal at all, especially considering the sweet rewards that come from that. So what I'm starting to do is when I see a watermelon, instead of looking at it as a, as a tedious chore, I'm trying to shift my mindset to go, just get after, get it done, take charge. And by the way, that's not a bad attitude to have with respect to all meal making. So that's first preliminary thing. Second is, let's wash it. Now, I'm sure that most of you are washing your produce all the time. I hope you're religious about it, actually. Um, I'm bringing it up, though, in response, in, in the case of watermelon, because melons, as you might remember, oh, maybe three, four years ago, we had a salmonella outbreak, and it was traced to cantaloupe. And it was quite severe and serious. Some people died, and a lot of people got sick. So our Extension Service, which is run out of Colorado State University, did some investigation and research about how can consumers protect themselves. And the result was surprisingly simple. Just wash your produce, <laughs> but wash it under running water. So that's what you're going to see me doing here. And what I might also say, and you can see that with this, the, the smooth skin of the watermelon, I can just kind of rub it with my hands to make sure that I'm getting everything off. But if you've got a cantaloupe, because of their textured surface, you might want to just rub it with your um, vegetable scrubber to make sure you get in all the nooks and crannies. Okay, so those are the two pre a couple preliminary things. So let's go ahead and get started with cutting this watermelon. So in terms of cutting the watermelon, we want to cut it in half this way, between the two ends there. And you'll see the reason for that in just a minute. And you can see that that's going to be quite a challenge with a watermelon this size, right? So um, I'm using a really big knife. Don't try to do this with anything smaller, like something like this. Not going to work. And having a point on it will help as well. Although, if all you've got is a Santuku style knife, that will work as well. So what I'm going to do, because this is so big, I'm actually going to kind of perhaps cut it from one side and then go in on the other. We'll just see what works and might have to just muscle it just a little bit because it is so big. But there I've gotten through half of it. And now I'll just go around the other half. And big thing is, don't be in a hurry. When you're using a knife, just take your time. It's no big problem. Um, but the, now you can see why did I have us cut it that way. Because then we're going to cut the watermelon further, but you can see that there are kind of like what I call seed lines. And that's where all the seeds are kind of concentrated in a few areas of the watermelon. So what I'm going to do is cut down right next to one of those seed lines. And we'll go ahead and do the other side as well, kind of go right next to that seed line. And what that does is, I, is when I open this up, you'll see that I've got all of the seeds right in there together which makes it really easy. Then I take a really large fork, like maybe the kind of fork you use to toss a salad, for instance, and I can just go right down in that seed line and kind of chunk out those seeds. And you can see that doesn't take too much at all, does it? And then what I can do is once I get up the first few, I might take my fork and kind of pull out a couple of the surface pieces there. And then I can get out the next layer of seeds down here. 
There we go. And then from there, it's a pretty easy task to chunk out the rest of the watermelon. And you might find a couple more seeds. But you can see then you can get these nice big chunks out. And they're all pretty much seedless. Keep your eye out. You might find a couple. But a lot faster. So I'm going to go ahead. Let me demonstrate this one more time. Um, I'm going to start here on this seed line using my fork to kind of flip those seeds out and flip out any that I can see from the surface. Then I go ahead and just lift out pieces of the watermelon, check them to make sure they don't have any seeds, and take out the next layer of seeds. And then at this point, this entire chunk is pretty much seeded. So you can take, it's actually easier to take a big spoon, which is what I'll do, is a big large spoon to scoop this out. And there might be a couple of seeds, but no big deal. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish seeding this. And I'm chunking everything into my Vitamix um, so I can make the cooler. You might want to be just putting it in a bowl or something to store in the fridge because nice seeded chunks of um, watermelon make a wonderful snack. So I'll be right back in just a minute as soon as I get this seeded and we'll make a watermelon cooler. Okay, I'm back with a pitcher full of wonderful seeded watermelon that is really juicy and sweet. And, you know, one of the things I was doing as I was putting the chunks in here was occasionally kind of breaking them up just a little bit so that they're all somewhat equally sized and we don't end up with any really large chunks. That makes it be able to process more evenly and you're, you don't end up with some big chunks and some completely pureed. So that's kind of a good idea. And now this super simple recipe, all we're going to do is add some mint and some lime. And on mint, I'm adding just a leaf or two because, you know, mint can be um, um, an herb that's pretty powerful. So I'd start small with it, just a leaf or two. And you can see that I'm also breaking it up so that it mixes around better throughout the, um, the smoothie or the cooler. And then I've got my lime in here, and my nice little juicer. And I'm going to go ahead and put in, well, I love lime, so I'm going to be putting in the entire lime. And this one isn't particularly juicy either, so I'm going to put that whole one in. But if, if you've got a juicier lime and or you're not quite certain, stop out with just a half. And that brings up something that I'm not giving you an exact recipe for this. And the reason is that so much depends on how sweet and how flavorful your watermelon is. How much do you like mint? How much do you like lime? And the fact is, it's so easy with this particular dish to simply taste it and see if you'd like a little more lime or a little more mint. So I'm kind of leaving that up to you to make it just the way you like because that's the important thing is to make it the way that you like. Okay, so now I've got to go ahead and turn this on. So I'm going to, it's going to get loud and I will cut that part out. But then we'll come back after that's over and we'll give it a taste and see if it needs anything. Okay, so I'm back, and I've got this all blended up. A Vitamix makes really quick work of blending. And now just get your little tasting glass and go ahead and taste it. See what you think. Oh, and I love it. It's so refreshing and, 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 and just delightful. And I hope you like it as well. Now, some people might want to add a little ice to this to make it cooler and more like a slushy. Um, and which is fine, or you might put bubble water in it, but honestly, I don't like to thin it out like that. I'd rather just maybe set it in the freezer, set the timer for no more than 20-30 minutes so it can get chilled that way. Or I just chill the watermelon before I make them, or and, and put this in the refrigerator until I'm, I need it, and that I chill it that way rather than watering it down. Or another fun thing could be freezing some watermelon ice cubes. Um, and speaking of freezing, in case you end up with too much watermelon, you know, you can freeze these coolers and they're really wonderful when you get to December and you get a little taste of summer when you thaw them out and drink them in December. So listen, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've gotten some tips that can help you enjoy watermelon more, especially as it's in season. And I want to say, if you like this video and it's helpful, could you please share it? Like it, comment below, pass it on to some friends, because the more interest we can get, the more that we can do videos that help offer people the practical tools and the mindsets and the motivation 
to cook with real whole foods and enjoy the wonderful health that comes with that. So thanks everybody and until next time, happy meal making.